Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Claire Marquick, and this is Real Life Business. Hey, how are you? Welcome to the show. If this is your first time listening, then thank you so much for lending me your ears. And if you are back for another episode, thank you again for your continued support. If you're in business and like me, wear many different hats, then this is the show for you. If you're wanting more time, more money, less stress, more control, this is the show for you. Join me each week for a blend of conversation and solo episodes where we get real about business and talk about how best to navigate that emotional and financial roller coaster we find ourselves on without driving ourselves mad. This isn't your average small business podcast, but then who wants to be average? You ready? Let's get into it. Now, before we do, I just want to let you know of a unique opportunity I have open right now. I am in the midst of developing the Real Life Business Hub, an online platform combining self-paced business development content with regular group coaching calls and expert masterminds. I have a small group of business owners in there right now working through the content as I upload it and guiding me as to what would be really valuable to have in there. Now, I have a limited capacity for a few more beta hub members. So if this is something that you are curious to find out more about, head on over to reallifebusiness.com.au forward slash hub to find out all you need to know. All right, let's get into the episode. Welcome to episode number 29 of the Real Life Business Podcast. And this week is a solo episode with yours truly, where I want to talk a bit about ourselves, specifically our personality um, and knowing ourselves, because self-awareness to me is one of the most important skills to develop. We as the business owner or the, the entrepreneur or the solo operator, if we're, if, we were, if we're solopreneurs, are the most important asset in our business and therefore the most important asset to develop. When we know ourselves, when we know more about what makes us tick, we, we know how we work best. We know what gives us energy. We therefore know how to structure our business around our genius zone. We know how to define success metrics. We know how to define decision-making criteria. And when we understand how we tick, it can help us build deeper, more meaningful relationships with those we work with, our employees, our suppliers, our contractors, our customers, our clients, our stakeholders, and everyone around us. When we think about the goal in in my real life business community, I say, you know, I, I, I focus on the goal being to grow a sustainable, profitable business that meets the needs of our life. Now, if we want to avoid burnout and frustration, boredom, stress, anxiety, that is where knowing ourselves and what gives us energy and what we are naturally good at really helps because that really feeds into the sustainability piece. If we're having to constantly motivate ourselves and drag ourselves out of bed to do tasks in our business or to operate our business in a way that drains us or to work with people who drain us, then it's not going to be sustainable because no matter how many mantras we chant, no matter how good our morning ritual is, If we're doing things that don't energize us, that don't align with us as a person, there is only so long that we can do that for before we are going to burn out or drive ourselves crazy. So where do we start? How do we determine what makes us tick? How do we know what our personality is? When you think about it, at our core, we are all born exactly the same as tiny newborn babies We're born the same in as much as we are experiencing the world for the first time. It's only as we grow older and we experience things for ourselves and we start to generate memories and we have big people around us that start to teach us the way, teach us how to think, teach us what to believe that we start to develop our own values, our own way of thinking, our own filters, if you like, through which we see the world. Now, 
Our personality is one of those filters. So whilst we're all at our absolute core the same, we're all incredibly different as well. You know, think about it. How many times, I know how many times I've said, oh my God, you know, looking at our boys, you know, they're so different. They've come from the same mold, but they are so different. And it's true, isn't it? Like we are all the same at our core, but how we see things, how we do things, what we're good at, what our superpowers are, what our genius zone is, it is all different. And it's not right or wrong. I was literally having this conversation with my hubby just the other day, because we do see the world quite differently, which can lead to some quite interesting discussions sometimes. And I was saying to him, you know, you see the world like this, I see the world like that. You're not right and I'm wrong and I'm not right and you're wrong. We're just different. And the power comes from having the awareness of that and then having the capacity to, I guess, come together and reach a compromise so that we can work together most effectively. So this is a massive topic that in a 15, 20 minute podcast episode, we're only going to scratch the surface on. We're only really going to create awareness around the things that we can create awareness around, if that makes any sense at all. So we're talking very, very generally, but the more that we can learn about ourselves, the better we can get at tweaking, the better we can get at improving and the better we can get at creating that sustainable business. Now, I run workshops on this topic all the time because I truly believe it is the most important thing when it comes to building resilience, either in ourselves as leaders or business owners or in our business itself. And I was delivering this to a group of year 11 students last week, and I spoke about three different ways or three specific ways that we can be different. Now, remember, this is a, these, these are sweeping generalizations. This is very, very high level in, in this context right here. But I want to go through each of those three ways that we can be different in turn. So you can start to have a think about which side of the spectrum you think you might fall on. And I want to pay attention to the fact that it is a spectrum. It's not an either or. It's not I'm 100% this, I'm 100% that. It's not about labeling at all. I hate when when people talk about personalities and, and profiling, behavioral profiling and all that kind of stuff. I hate the boxes. I hate the labels. I hate the definition of this is me because ultimately we all have natural preferences. And ideally, we want to structure our lives, our business, and everything that we do to fall into the things that we do most naturally. However, there will be times where we have to do things outside of our comfort zone, where we have to do the things that don't necessarily light us up all of the time. But having awareness of that helps us to decide when we might do that in the day, in, in our week, helps us to decide what support we might need to do that, helps us to you know decide the best way to go about it. And ultimately, it helps us decide what to delegate as well, you know, when we know where our true strengths lie. So when we have the capacity to delegate those things that aren't in our genius zone, aren't in our natural preference, then all the better because that really helps us keep that sustainability going because we're constantly recharging our batteries instead of draining them. So the first preference, if you will, the first way in which we can be different is by thinking about what gives us energy. Where do we get our energy from? Where do we get our recharge from? Do we get that more internally? Or do we get that more externally? Are we someone who likes to quietly reflect and, you know, sit, sit and focus inwards to recharge our batteries? Or are we someone who likes to be around other people who likes to talk and bounce and chatter and get things out externally? Perhaps we're more a ponderer. Do we want to understand or do we want to do? And I think the biggest, the when I'm delivering this in a workshop, particularly with teenagers, 
this statement coming up now is the one that really makes it sink in, you know, really makes it go, oh my God, yeah, that's me. Are you someone who thinks to speak or are you someone who speaks to think? Now I'm very much the latter most of the time. Now remember I said this is a sliding scale. So although I'm giving them to you in an either or scenario right now, there are going to be situations where you think, well, actually, sometimes I, I do more this and sometimes I do more that. Or maybe most of the time I love being around people and I get all my energy from being around people and talking. But there comes a point where I have to have a bit of alone time, have a bit of reflection time. And that's what I mean by the fact that it's a scale. We, we've all got all of this in us. Remember, we all started off the same. But just through our conditioning, through our life, through our values, through our memories, through our experiences, through our learnt beliefs, through everything we experience as we get older, we will start to develop a natural preference one way or the other. So for me, I know that I am very outward thinking. I love being around people. I love bouncing. If I have an idea, if I have something that I want to work on or something that's popped into my head, I have to talk it through. So, you know, if I can't get around people, I'll talk it out loud to myself or I'll talk to my dog or I'll talk to the chickens. I have to talk. I have to vocalize things. I have to get things out. And if you follow me on social media, you'll know the other thing that I talk a lot about is writing things down. So just getting things out of our heads and getting them onto a piece of paper. So that's what I mean by outward. That's the thing that really gives me energy. And I have to speak things through in order to process. But I know my husband, on the other hand, for example, ponders and thinks, and he'll sit there quietly mulling things over in his head. And then when he has fully processed it, then he speaks. So which side of the, which side of the equation would you say you lean more heavily towards? Are you a more inwardly focused person? Is that what gives you your energy? Or are you a more outwardly focused person? Is that what gives you energy? And when you know the answer to that question, have a think then about your business, how you operate your business. How does that align to what gives you energy? For me, for example, as a solopreneur working from home and someone who gets a lot of energy and values conversation and being able to bounce with people, I know that I need to build in bouncing time, if you will, conversation time into my business. I know that I need to be around people for a certain element of the time, because if I were just at home all day, every day by myself behind the computer, I would go stir crazy. Likewise, if you're a more inwardly focused person and you are customer facing and you are on all the time, that is going to be completely draining for you. So then you can start to reflect and then you can start to answer questions, ask yourself questions, you know, well, if this is how I operate and this is what gives me energy, this is how I'm currently working, what can I do to change things? What do I need to build in to give me that recharge time so that I'm, you know, my batteries are fully charged and I can tackle this each day. So that's what I mean by the the, the kinds of questions we can ask ourselves and the changes and the tweaks that we can make in how we run our business to better align with our natural preferences. So guys, this is so, so powerful. And I know this is a super high level overview right now, but it's really great to just start to give us an idea of some of the things that we could tweak. Now, the second preference or the second way that we can be different is how we make decisions. And again, think of this as a sliding scale. This is not an either or, this is not a black or white. This is very much a shades of gray continuum. And we might switch, we might bounce along this continuum depending on the situation, depending on where we're at, but we will have a natural preference and natural tendency for one side of the center line or the other. So in terms of how we make decisions, the two criteria are whether we use our heads or whether we use our heart, whether we use data and logic or whether we use emotion, whether we're more analytical or whether we're more feeling, whether we're more focused on things or whether we're more focused on people. Are we more concerned with what a decision is going to impact or are we more concerned with who a decision is going to impact? So just have a think about some of the last few decisions that you've made in your business or in your life. 
and reflect on the criteria that you used to make that decision. Was it more fact-based? Was it more data? Was it more logical and analytical? Were you using your head or was it more heartfelt? where you drew on emotion and how you felt and the people that it was going to impact. Now, remember what I said at the beginning, neither of these is right or wrong, but have a think about the consequences or the repercussions of having different people in your business that might fall on different sides of the continuum. So when you have someone who is very, very data oriented and analytical and logical, working with someone who is very feelings based, very emotional, there can be a lot of conflict there. There can be a lot of, you know, you can't just, you can't just make a decision based on gut feel. You've got to look at the facts and look, depending on the gravity of the situation, there is going to be an element of that. Of course there is. You can't just always go on gut feel if you know, that's going to put you in serious financial jeopardy. So of course there is always an element of making sure that you know all the information, but just because you're someone who puts a lot of emphasis in feeling and emotion and who a decision is going to impact and how that's going to make you feel is not wrong. And I think it's really, really important to understand how we naturally make decisions because then we can build a decision making criteria. You know, I have a set of parameters. I have a set of five things that I run a decision through. And some of those are logic and some of those are emotion. But that's what I've put in place to make sure that my need for feeling right about a situation is balanced with ensuring that I've got the resources, for example, to actually pull off that decision. Now, the final way that we can be different, the final preference that I want to talk through um, quickly now is how we take in and process information. Now, for working with other people, I believe this one is probably the single biggest cause of frustration and conflict within, within a team or within a working relationship, how we take in and process information. Now, either side of the continuum in this case is we're either very pragmatic or we're very imaginative. We're very sensation focused, like in the here and now, or we're very intuitive and we're using our gut feel. Are we in the present or are we in the future? Do we take things step by step or do we jump to conclusions? Now, I know that I am someone who leans very heavily towards the intuitive side. I trust my gut and I can, when I don't have all of the information that I need, I fill in the gaps with assumptions and I jump to conclusions and I think about what could be. And this does drive my husband mad because he is very much in the here and now and very much focused on the what I can see, touch, taste, feel, you know, the use of the senses. What is right here in front of me right now? Whereas someone who someone who has leans more toward the intuitive side takes that so takes what's physically in front of them takes the situation takes the experience that we're in right now and then takes it a step further what could we do with this where could this take us what could this lead to what could this mean And so those kinds of people are very much thinking in the future. Now, if that's you and you're working with someone who is very much in the here and now, there can be a lot of conflict that comes around that because they're like, well, where did you get that from? Like, how did you get from here to here? Like what, what, what just happened? And a lot of the time, like I know for me, it's like, well, I don't know. I just, I've just got a feeling like that's what we need to do. And so again, having this awareness of how we operate helps us to put in place parameters, helps us to put in place boundaries, helps us to put in place structures so that we can better work with the people around us. And when we've got all of that in place, again, like it's full circle, that's what helps us create sustainability in our business because we're not wasting energy bickering and arguing or sorting out conflict or you know, doing things that misalign with with where we sit most naturally. Now, how these three preferences interact is where we start to develop an understanding for our natural tendencies, for our leadership style, for our personality. 
And understanding this helps us to better structure our day. You know, what, what tasks do we do at what time of the day? When do we have most energy? When have we got the most focus, the most concentration? So we know that the tasks that take more energy, for example, we can structure them into the beginning of the day, the beginning of the week when, you know, when we're most focused and those things that we do more naturally, we can do later on when perhaps our, our energy is starting to wane, our battery is starting to deplete a little bit. Understanding all this helps us make decisions more confidently. It helps us to, like I said earlier, it helps us to understand what to outsource and when. It helps us to develop our team. And that doesn't mean recruiting people that are the same as us because diversity for me, the most important part of diversity is diversity of thought. So we want people that come from, that see the world from different perspectives. We want people who think differently and process differently because that's going to help us see things in our business that otherwise we wouldn't be able to see. But we want to be able to do that resourcefully. We don't want to then be spending all our time dealing with conflict and, and arguments and people problems, which is what so many people, unfortunately, um, are dealing with right now. And it also helps us, it helps us to streamline because we can then eliminate things from our day, from our business, from how we operate that doesn't give us energy, that doesn't recharge our batteries, that doesn't align. So that's what I mean by when we understand ourselves, it can really help our business grow because we can understand what we need to do sustainably. And when things are sustainable, we can keep doing them. We're not going to burn ourselves out. We're not going to get to that point of frustration, of, of burnout, of exhaustion. And let's face it, that's, that's the goal, right? We want a business that is sustainable, that looks after itself and looks after us and the lifestyle that we want to be living. Now, if you have loved this conversation and are now thinking, oh my God, like there's so much I need to know, there's so much more I want to know about myself, then I am developing content around this topic area right now in the real life business hub it is so important to understand ourselves and what that means for our business and for our team so if this is something you are curious to know more about shoot me a dm on insta or email me at claire at reignitepc.com.au and let's have a chat Alrighty then, that is it from me for this week. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. If you're not already, jump on and follow me on socials at the Real Life Business Community. Subscribe on your podcast app of choice or on YouTube so you never miss a new episode when it drops. And get yourself onto my Real Talk mailing list for weekly doses of inspiration, business tips, recommendations, and Real Talk direct to your inbox. All the links to that are in the show notes to this episode. Also, just a reminder that the Real Life Business Hub beta offer is open for a few more weeks. So if you would love to grab one of those spots, simply drop me an email, send me an Insta DM or go check out reallifebusiness.com.au forward slash hub for all you need to know. I trust you have enjoyed this episode. Have a fabulous week and I will be back in your ears really soon. Bye-bye.